Welcome to Gospel Tangents. I'm your host, Rick Bennett. Please consider donating or purchasing a transcript by going to our website, gospeltangents.com shop. You'll help support other documentaries and podcasts such as this. In our third conversation with Dr. Brian Hales, we'll talk about the earliest rumors of polygamy. In 1835, the Doctrine and Covenants published a declaration on marriage. We've got a couple questions about that. First of all, did Joseph Smith actually author that revelation, or was it someone else like Oliver Cowdery? Second, was it a response to polygamy that could have been happening in the Kirtland community? What does Dr. Brian Hales think about these things? Um, Claire Barris gave a presentation at a, at a, a, a Mormon history conference in which he said that there was no documentation of any polygamy revelations prior I wish I remember this exactly, but I believe 1838, that there's no documentation of that until about 1838. And that's when you first start to get the first uh, points of documentation. So, um, but in talking with Dr. Staker, one of the things that he mentioned was, I believe it was 1835, you have the Declaration on Marriage, which was originally a section in, in the Book of Commandments, but then it was later taken out and replaced with section 132. Um, could you talk about some of those polygamy uh, rumors? I know, I know in your book you said there was nothing in the news about them, but uh, you know, in 1835, Dr. Staker makes the case that, well, why would they talk about polygamy if polygamy wasn't a problem? So there must have been something going on in Kirtland in the early, at least 1830s. The first um, accusation against the Latter-day Saints, they weren't called that then, against the Mormons, Mormonites, um, that they were were that they had embraced some alternate form of marriage, came in 1831. Mm. It was in conjunction with the law of consecration, and it was basically that not only did they share everything, they share their wives. That was the accusation that came up, and of course it's easily refuted. There's nothing to support that that was ever even thought of or discussed. So when people say they were talking about polygamy in Kirtland, I I would really like to see the data on that, that this was actually a response to polygamy because my research shows that there was, with respect to Joseph and Fanny Alger, discussion of adultery. And that was the claim that everybody was worried about. I don't find anybody discussing polygamy during that period. And if we read the, uh, the section 101, which is on marriage, it was entitled, uh, it talks about polygamy, but it talks about fornication and adultery. And, and so to say that this is reacting to polygamy rumors, it, it could be true, but there's no evidence for that. And so I argue that this is really just a blanket statement that's covering the, the comments made about this idea of law consecration and sharing wives, as well as any other accusations. And, and Oliver Cowdery wrote, uh, it's a very nice declaration, he said, you know, we haven't got anywhere near enough time to respond to all of the accusations that are being made against us. So I don't think that's a real strong argument that the article, because it mentions a man having uh, one wife, that that, and, and technically the language, if you look at it closely, does not prevent a polygamy. And we can talk about that if you want. This is not my observation. This is an observation from the RLDS Church uh, writer as well as President Joseph F. Smith that the language does not actually uh, prevent polygamy. It, it, it's a little ambiguous uh, when it comes to that. So. Yeah, actually, go ahead. I was just reading that just yesterday, but go uh, ahead and, and finish that point. Okay, what it says is that a man should have but one, a woman should have but one husband and a man, but well. A man, one wife. One wife. The language doesn't say should it be only one wife or at least one wife. I could. Yeah, the, go ahead and grab it. The, the exact. Uh, okay. okay, what I have now is the uh, uh, 1835 Doctrine and Covenants. And what it says here, it says, um, the Church of Christ has been reproached with the crime of fornication and polygamy we declare that we believe that one man should have one wife and one woman but one husband. And what has been pointed out is that it doesn't say that a man should have only one wife. It doesn't say that a man should have at least one wife. 
And so the accusation has been made by critics and even by a church president that this was intentional language allowing for polygamy to be practiced in the future. Now the irony of that is that this was printed twice in Nauvoo as evidence that the church was not practicing polygamy. So despite this, this loophole, potential loophole, do I think that Joseph put that in there intentionally? I have no idea. It wouldn't surprise me if he did, to be honest with you. I mean, he, he, he had a long view of things and he, he would have known, or he may have known, uh, again, that it was at least a correct principle from 1831. So whether it was carefully crafted or just a coincidence, uh, if, you, if you want to disagree, and that goes for anybody listening, that's fine because we'll never resolve it. Well, one other point I want to talk about that uh, Dr. Staker mentioned, and I believe Rich, Dr. Richard Bennett mentioned as well, was some people believe that that section was not authored by Joseph Smith, but was authored by Oliver Cowdery. What's your opinion on that? Do you know, in, in my volume one, I, I go into this in some detail. Mm -hmm. And what we find is, yes, Joseph was gone. And yes, they were, they were quick to get this passed. In fact, they called for this conference on Sunday to be done on Monday. And there were almost no leaders there. Uh, the, Quorum, the, uh, the Quorum of the Twelve, there were almost no one present. The High Council wasn't really represented. The, the theory is that they were trying to get it pushed through before Joseph got back because they, Oliver had these reasons and stuff. I, I don't think so. Um, and I'm grateful to Michael Marquart uh, for he, helping me. We sat one afternoon down in his basement and we went through all the documents. And, and what we find is that at that point in time, they needed to go forward with the printing of the Doctrine and Covenants. They had published, we think, most of, of the book up to section 110, 101, which is the article on marriage. And that they're, they're having piles of all these papers around the printing office. And so we think, uh, or at least I think, and I think Michael agrees, that the driver at that point was really that they just wanted to get the official approval so that they could finish publishing the Doctrine and Covenants. And, and I, so I, I don't think that, that they were trying to, to do something backhanded with Joseph. When Joseph came back, there's, there's no uh, evidence, I think, that he really disapproved of what had happened. In fact, he quotes or refers to the article on marriage uh, two or three times later when he's performing marriages. He said, this, is, this declares our church's belief, which they had to have in writing in order for the, the uh, elders of the church to be authorized by the state to perform state recognized marriages. So there were a number of things. The other evidence that, that I found is that um, if you go back and look at the index of the 1835 Doctrine and Covenants, which was written weeks before Joseph uh, had left Kirtland, you find that section 101 is referenced in this index. So the index was, was uh, written be before and Joseph even quotes from the index. But the index didn't have page numbers. So I think that that information tells me that, yes, they were planning to include it. Joseph was planning to include it. And it was just a matter of getting the printing done so they'd have a page number to put in there. But people can try this out themselves. Just get an 1835 copy of the Doctrine and Covenants and look at it. And then and we know it was published earlier because of the timeline of, of some of the things that were quoted from it. So I, I, don't, I don't ascribe to... Uh, it was actually, I think... Uh, Richard Van Wagner's book, um, Mormon Polygamy, yeah. that first introduced this theory. Todd Compton reiterated the possibility. He didn't jump totally on board, but I, I really think it's it's a, it's a, a so whether whether Oliver may have written it, authored it or not, it didn't seem like it bothered Joseph at all, and he was fine with it. Is that safe I to say? I believe so. Um, I'd have to refresh my memory, but what we do know is that he, he could have had it rescinded. Um, but he also quoted it as authoritative, in, and Michael Marquardt pointed this out to me, and I think he's even published that somewhere that Joseph did consider it after the fact to be uh, the, the official declaration of the church at that time. Okay. I hope you enjoyed our discussion with Dr. Brian Hales. In our next conversation, we'll talk about Joseph's first plural wife, Fanny Alger. Many have noted that this marriage occurred before the sealing of power was restored in 1836 in Kirtland. Was this marriage for time, or was it for eternity? It wouldn't have been a ceiling. It wouldn't have been an eternal marriage, but 
the authority that was used by Joseph uh, to marry people uh, for the church, but just for time in Kirtland, that authority certainly could have been used here, and that's my theory. Click here to subscribe, click here for a transcript, and over here you'll see some other videos that we've done here on YouTube. We hope you'll use this as a valuable resource to learn more about Mormon history.